Hello and welcome to another webinar on understanding the role of cultural exchange in the peaceful coexistence of diverse communities. My name is Heman Das and I'm a senior research associate at South Asia Research Institute for Minorities. And it is a pleasure to have you all with us in today's discussion. At SARIM, uh, we aim to promote understanding and coexistence among different minority communities across South Asia. We conduct in-depth research, facilitate dialogue, and advocate for rights of minorities, aiming to build a society where diversity is celebrated and embraced. Uh, I mean, before uh, we dwell into our discussion, let me give you some background about on today's topic. Uh, you know, cultural exchange is not just a concept, but a practice that each of us can actively participate in by sharing our traditions, values, and ways of life, we can build bridges of empathy and cooperation in a world where conflict often arises from misunderstanding and prejudices. Each of us has the power to promote peaceful coexistence through cultural exchange. In this peaceful coexistence, cultural exchange can help bridge gaps between communities reduce stereotypes uh, and promote mutual respect <clears throat> sorry it also enables uh, enable everyone to see beyond their cultural boundaries and recognize the shared humanity that connects uh, us all in a world where conflict often arises from misunderstanding uh, of cultural differences cultural exchange offers a pathway to peace and unity to explore this topic further, we have the privilege of hosting an esteemed panel of speakers from various fields who bring a wealth of knowledge and experience. Their insights will undoubtedly enrich our understanding of the role of cultural exchange in promoting peaceful coexistence. First, let me introduce our speakers. Professor Ubaid Manwatkar is from the USA. Ms. Rita Periyar is from Nepal. Shireen Shavana Khan from India. Unfortunately, one of our speakers, Ms. Rita Perayar, would not join us due to uh, her health concern. Uh, with that background, I would like to invite our first speaker, Professor Ubeit Manwatkar. He is currently a professor of world religious cultures at North Park University in Chicago. He is a distinguished interfaith and intercultural scholar, writer, singer, and passionate peace and justice activist. His work has significantly contributed to promoting interfaith dialogue and understanding across cultures. Professor Manwatkar, please share your insights on the role of cultural exchange in fostering interfaith dialogue and understanding. Over to you. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, South Asia Research Institute of Minorities uh, team. Uh, I'm grateful for this opportunity to, uh, for this invitation to speak. And, uh, so, uh, uh, may I have a, uh, uh, may I share my screen? I have a presentation to, uh, PowerPoint presentation. So sure. I can share it. All. all right. So it's always a joy to be at, uh, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's always a joy to be, uh, at our own South Asia Research in, in Institute of Minorities, uh, uh, platform and, uh, uh, well, I'm not an expert of any topic and I'm, uh, to be honest, like as an academician, as a, I am still, still uh, learning a lot of things about, uh, things, uh, happening. And so, uh, as far as the concept note of, uh, and, uh, and as far as the objectives of this webinar is, I have uh, prepared a PowerPoint as it was required for this webinar for the young researchers. And so, uh, yeah. So it's like the topic is on the role of culture exchange in peaceful coexistence of diverse communities. And uh, 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 first things first, uh, we need to understand what is cultural exchange. As a, uh, the, our our host has already uh, uh, shared uh, what what exactly I, that is. So in my and uh, there are various differences of cultural exchange. Cultural exchange, of course. Uh, in general, it is defined as when people of two or more different uh, backgrounds, uh, trade ideas, um, feelings, stories, and customs as a form of creating dialogue and understanding diversity in communities to help build 
community relations and cohesion. But as at to its core, cultural exchange is about exchange of cultural knowledge and experiences between two people from different backgrounds. Background could be of heritage, ethnicities, or religions. It's a two-way street where individuals from diverse cultures come together to share their traditions, customs, values, and worldviews. This exchange leads to mutual understanding, breaking down stereotypes, and building bridges of friendship and respect between cultures. So that was the definition how I define cultural exchange. Uh, exchange is exchange. It's cultural exchange. So uh, we interact with people. We 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 uh, we at our work, be it our work place, be it at anywhere. So every time, whenever we engage with uh, uh, people who don't belong to our families or who are who are just uh, who don't live in our house, basically. If you step out of the house and if you interact with people, that is literally a cultural exchange. You are talking with someone, that is an exchange. So, because culture is a very uh, deeper topic and uh, uh, everyone has a culture. Every human being has a different culture. And culture comes from the ideas and uh, we do exchange our ideas. And so, uh, few of the examples of cultural exchange we can say that there are uh, uh, like uh, sports is one of the best example like people uh, together so, uh, so many people like practicing a sport is still the most popular unbeatable and exchange like it's lets you practice the local language in natural way uh, sports uh, well in the west uh, mostly in the west uh, it's soccer baseball you know uh, and of course, sports uh, like Nelson Mandela use sports as a tool in South Africa, especially uh, to um, to work so that the blacks and whites could work together in there. You know, they, they had a problem there. So Nelson Mandela, when he was president, he he really promoted cricket uh, in South Africa, especially. And uh, you know, 1992 team, uh, 1996 team of South Africa was very very dominant. If you watch cricket. I think this is South Asian platform. People of South Asia watch cricket a lot, you know. And uh, in cricket, my team is Pakistan. I'm from India, but I like cheer for Pakistan against India. And uh, and when my Indian friends uh, were they are sitting together watching India Pakistan match, <laughs> that's fun uh, because cheering a cheering Pakistan in front of India supporters and uh, being in India, it's uh, hard. And then. Uh, uh, you know, like because the people's sentiments, emotions are uh, joined uh, in uh, through game, uh, one cricket game. Like there are a lot of lot of uh, things. Cricket is like just cricket fever is really out there. So cricket can be a tool to unite uh, people, a cultural exchange, which can resolve the conflict. Nineteen eighty three, especially, uh, it was an amazing time in India. Uh, when India won the first ever World Cricket World Cup, to be honest. And, you know, 1983, there was so many communal clashes going in India. And it was communal conflict. And in 1984, it was a uh, huge uh, communal conflict happened in uh, India and uh, anti-Sikh riots happened in the, there. So, But in 1983, what happened is this cricket game, uh, there were uh, there were curfew going on in a lot of places in North India at the time of Indira Gandhi's government. And But this cricket fever was, cricket fame was installed in the mindset of people. Like Because first ever time, India reached the finals. <laughs> and uh, and uh, they were playing West Indies, the dominant time. So entire nation, Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, and everyone got together. You know, and they uh, they came uh, at one platform. They watching television, uh, and that really created the unity and harmony among people. So that's I see that uh, game in that sense. Today, cricket is used for another means. Uh, most of the things like uh, people they have conflicts with cricket uh, while watching it because cricket is too much of uh, related with nationalism and all that. But but to be honest, like sports, at least. Uh, uh, at least in India, especially, or at least e during India-Pakistan match, especially, be it Hindu or Muslim or anyone, they will they will 
go to each other houses and oh bro uh, leave leave every communal part soon let's unite for a team india see so uh, cultural exchange uh, the sports plays an important role and we can use sports as a tool for cultural exchange another is dance uh, depending on the tradition style and a uh, lot of artistic uh, dance is there music is there uh, one of the tools to have uh, gastronomy is there gastronomy is about the uh, food exchanging food uh, so and of course style style means a uh, uh, clothing and discovering new trends to uh, dominant world fashion capital so style sports uh, you can say food or uh, these are some like uh, music of course uh, india pakistan especially uh, people love music and uh, especially and and one one time like so apart from nationalities uh, to be honest in music world uh, nusrat fateh ali khan sahab is still honored by both both the countries that's a commonality uh, nusrat sahab is nusrat sahab i am big fan of nusrat nusrat sahab in india i have been listening to it so so i never knew that he was from pakistan when i started listening to him you know and but nusrat sahab was never a pakistani uh when it comes to music nusrat sahab is nusrat sahab he's a king of music and people of both countries singers of both countries remember him mm, uh, of course gulam ali khan sahab ghazal singer so see uh, we know these people because through music we don't know we we don't think that oh this guy is pakistani or this guy is indian or something so see music unites uh, music can be a helpful little tool for culture exchange style of course uh, i shared it of course the uh, food biryani mm, both countries love it there are different types of biryanis out there uh, be it in near mm-hmm. pakistan uh, of course uh, there are different variations different definitions uh, uh recently when in, there was a world cup cricket world cup and so pakistan team arrived in hyderabad and india fed them hyderabadi biryani right there and but there was a critic from the legendary cricketer wasim akram sahab and he said like oh no that's not biryani that's kind of pulao we pakistan have better biryani than india like okay so uh, <laughs> and so uh i i tweeted to uh, wasim akram sahab sir when are you inviting us to a biryani in pakistan you know we we'll love to have biryani with the pakistan about because we never had a pakistani biryani so uh, because wasim akram sahab uh, critic that it is not a biryani it's a pulao kind of thing see see now pulao and biryani you know so like this is a fusion so don't know so see this, i'm i'm just saying these are some funny conversation from the celebrities which i'm quoting but actually uh, this is a part of cultural exchange this is this is something we are exchanging our food our ideas our thoughts and so so that we could come together so these are some examples of cultural exchange role of technology has played a uh, technology plays a vital role in uh, uh, facilitating cultural exchange of course social media platforms like zoom and uh, uh, other uh, softwares who, which have arrived and so right now we are having this webinar this is a form of exchange and i am exchanging my thoughts you are exchanging your thoughts social media platforms facebook twitter twitter uh, twitter have introduced spaces there are whatsapp video conferencing uh, zoom zoom online forums of course uh, webinars happen uh, webinars like this are happening uh, people from uh, different parts of the countries are coming together and talking about some th- uh, some issue sharing some thoughts uh, these are uh, the technology has played an important role so i don't need to come to fly to pakistan to talk about this topic anymore you know you can just send me a zoom mail, zoom meeting link and uh, and ask me like are you available at this time and we can get together see so uh, online uh, platforms like language is also now it's uh, it has uh, technology has uh, dismantled very many barriers of uh, cultural exchange so uh, it has made cultural exchange very easy uh, way you know so we can we know now uh, like uh, there are languages different languages exist in the world because of the technology 
so basically if you if you are traveling to any country uh what do you search we we do research on google like okay what this country is all about what this uh, oh, what are the situations going on there you know and so so see technology is playing a important role to educate us about the things which we don't know and so that is part of culture exchange so so technology has played amazing role uh but again there are there's a breakdown there is there is always a, a some negative part out there uh sometimes which happen like uh, the, this i made this chart so intercultural communication breakdown is like uh, sometimes what happens during the communication uh, we are ignorant on lot of cultural taboos and uh, so that area needs to be work what are the cultural taboos so for example if i am sitting at the pakistan with the pakistani guy uh, i need to know what his likes and dislikes are first ever thing if i start to communicate to someone no i uh, if i am being i am just talking about india pakistan context because uh, uh, because i am aware of uh, uh, the things uh, because i have i have unlearned many things uh, from the past because at one time i was a, a, a growing up as a teenager like uh, i was my brain was trained like pakistan is our enemy like we have we are always bound to hate pakistan because they are our enemies and why because this animosity this enmity has been smartly uh, uh installed in the brains of people of both countries that is that we are enemies of each other uh, partition horror still haunts us till today since 1947 and uh, uh, so that's why we have our own cultural taboos and uh, i since when i uh and to be honest like love towards uh, pakistan cricket team uh, <laughs> uh that was the beginning point uh, of my uh, unlearning my biases about this country, uh, this country because uh, uh, i saw cricket as a game just a game a sports game and when i started seeing this the, so then i came to know like wow this team really plays with like a uh, with very passion and enthusiasm and aggression and uh, and my in my house always like my mom was a secret uh, has been a secret fan of pakistan team and that also like in 1992 when i saw that so uh, when pakistan won the cricket world cup you know and javed miandad especially the great who is still there in pakistan cricket board but uh, he i loved his i i keep watching his videos usually old videos of his his way of playing cricket that aggression that enthusiasm you know so those are some like i unlearned a lot of things uh to uh to know myself better to provide myself in this area especially uh, in terms of india pakistan uh, then uh, of course we have cultural taboos number 2 uh, we have a lack of knowledge some uh, in the breakdown happens because we have lack of knowledge cultural norms and values of uh, some other person so so that's why the conflict happens religious contradiction religion plays an important role in every aspect uh, religion uh, uh e- is uh, sometimes it used uh, is you uh, it can be misused um, by things because religion unites us into one identity and and therefore there are uh, amazing people <laughs> in every religion who use religion as a tool to for their political gains for their political agenda it doesn't matter so when politicians use religion uh, make sure when politician makes statements about any religion i would say that politician has a political agenda to gain votes and so uh, so politicians uh, misinterpret religion mostly uh, so religious contradictions are there there are so we need to grow and increase our knowledge up in about uh, different faiths we need to learn about different faiths existing in this world uh, and of course uh, when i teach uh, in my university this class of world religions 
so we me and my senior professor we have already mentioned this class as not world religions class but it is about loving your neighbor and so that change the that changes the whole perspective of the class in my this is my experience uh, loving your neighbor means to love your neighbor which jesus said uh being a christian i said like so being a christian I, when jesus uh, when i read jesus love your neighbor as yourself so that is where uh that's the entry point like what if my neighbor is not a christian can i love him what if he doesn't like to eat what i eat can i still love him you know uh, what if uh, he uh, what if uh, what if he, he he doesn't get along with me he doesn't like things which i like can i still love it that challenges me so that's why like uh, so this uh, class my class becomes a practicing hospitality class so and so those are some uh, 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 areas where we have to i don't uh of course my students my uh, my students themselves told me uh, when we have a interaction and dialogue then uh, one of my bright student he like, always says this professor is a foodie he will surely ask a question about food to the guest speakers so what is a food well, what kind of food like so uh, so so, so the, see uh this really opens up uh, things like to understand like what we are and how we are so uh, so religious contradictions are there this needs to be uh, dealt very gently and very calmly so that uh, uh, in a very cool way and we, it can happen so indirect offenses caused by lack of experience some people think they are over smart they know everything and so uh, and then of course they have prejudice attitude so we love to trigger people some some are like that so Uh, that uh, behavior that attitude needs to be changed and uh, uh, me as a youngster i was like that you know i i love to provoke people i love to uh, antagonize people like to things you know so those are revolutionary things uh, uh, which we ex- expect from people sometimes it doesn't happen and so uh, we need to slow down on that in my opinion and so we need to slow down come down and think wisely that uh, revolutions don't happen in one day in one dialogue you no know, it takes time it needs to be re- nurtured the ideas need propagation as what baba saheb ambedkar says the ideas need to be nurtured it should be like the tree needs watering so we need to water them properly and so it's a lifelong process reconciliation uh, is a lifelong process and uh, we call brotherhood or sister so you know, it needs to be cultivated this idea needs to be cultivated it doesn't happen with in one uh, webinar it cannot happen so you know this needs to continue so so that's why like so we need to unlearn our prejudices we need to unlearn our cultural taboos we need to unlearn uh, learn most of the things learning and un- unlearning things this uh, this needs to continue and of course case study Uh, what your objective was there there are like i can share about 40 to 45 case studies to for the researchers but uh, uh, as i worked in a peace and reconciliation committee in india uh, we, i worked on conflict resolution my job was to in 2010 and 2011 era uh, my job was to uh, uh, to resolve the conflict uh, the people of different faiths when they were whenever there was a uh, sign of communal clash uh, people like me we were always on the ground observing the society and we would inform the government authority to stop this whenever it occurred so but again case study is uh, there are a lot of case studies but i can say like uh, i loved this uh, truth and reconciliation commission started by archbishop desmond tutu in uh, south africa that uh, really i loved this uh, experiment he did and it was successful uh, 
apartheid happened in south africa and archbishop desmond tutu along with nelson mandela uh, he worked uh, hard on this and so uh, he archbishop desmond tutu went to various platforms uh, to form this truth and reconciliation commission uh, to end the apartheid in south africa and and of course the he, he took the stories from the apartheid victims of south africa and uh, a lot of sources truth and reconciliation how it started and how it helped to resolve the apartheid issue uh, to to manage the things to manage the conflict to, to resolve the conflicts uh, and so yeah he he and dalai lama dalai lama and archbishop desmond tutu they become very good friends and uh, uh, so the archbishop desmond tutu is no more uh, but uh, he's rest in peace tutu sir but, but uh, he and dalai lama he is there both of their uh, uh, smiling videos laughing videos laughing together no one christian one buddhist they laughing together you know change together that those videos are very very good friends so yeah so here is the one case study to be researched upon how truth and reconciliation commission model can be used in the society to uh, to overcome the barriers and uh, to heal our past that can be i think this can be used uh, as a model to uh, to resolve the conflict and uh, and for the cultural exchange matter so so that's the end of my part and uh, i hope this will help you guys uh, to uh, help the audience to think about wonder about and if there is there any q and a i'm um, uh, open for q and a once again thank you so much south asia research institute for minorities to for giving me time Uh, this is going to be very helpful for audience, uh, and I totally agree with you that the culture knows no boundaries or borders. Uh, once again, thank you, Professor Manwadkar, for expressing your enlightening perspective with your beautiful PowerPoint. Uh, next, I would like to invite Shireen Chawana Khan. Uh, she is a program director at the People's Vigilance Committee on Human Rights. She has a dedication to human rights, and her extensive experience in grass uh, grassroots activism have been instrumental in advocating for the marginalized and oppressed communities in South Asia. Uh, Ms. Shavana, please share your experiences and thoughts on how cultural exchange can enhance human rights and social justice. Over to you. Please unmute yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Thank. You. you for giving me the opportunity already professor sahab has explained a lot about the cultural exchange and uh, the what the barriers are there and how the technologies so i am speaking on the uh, what experience uh, what pbchr is having regarding the cultural uh, things because in the working with the marginalized communities working with, with the youth and the different communities we came to know there are many boxes in the mind regarding the community regarding their cultures so they are not very comfortable with uh, with that and when we have a discussion what we are having the focus school we find there are many things where we need to work so uh, because our organization was working with the children uh, of the marginalized community where there was no school we were running the non formal education center we were working in the government school as well as we were working, we were working in the madrasa so we in the in that forum we provided the opportunities for the children to exchange their ideas through the street play through having a, a day non formal communication so they can understand to each other because the problem is that we have a limited limit uh, limited chance to interact because already in the school the children from the different community caste and religions are studying so but in that uh, we have a few times and we have a very limited things where we can interact we have a very selected friend and we cannot interact with everybody so at in the very starting what we have experienced there should be a program for organizing the cultural exchange that should be a part of the a curriculum for having a peaceful coexistence what we are needing now for creating a cultural uh, barriers and secondly to together with the nordic uh, norwegian organization we have a youth exchange program together with the india and the nepal 
so in that we have opportunity for hosting a eight participant from the nepal and we send our eight participant to there but before sending we have to uh, train our people because we have a different hooks about the different communities just like for the muslims for, for the nepalese for for our any uh, communities we have the thoughts that is been transformed without uh, checking the facts from one generation to other and that is been carried to the different uh, level and this is creating a, a kind of a, a barrier within ourselves which doesn't allow us to interact with the other communities because before interacting we have to uh, fight within ourselves that these are the information with what we are carrying now and how to take that so in this situation that youth exchange program the interaction with the children as well as the now we are seeing the lot of the social media tools are there we are looking uh, the uh, small videos reels from our neighboring countries from the uh, different communities so it help us to understand what is going on there just like regarding the language we are what we are now seeing everybody is putting the uh, urdu and persian uh, shairies together with the photos and that is making them to read what is the urdu shairi and what is the hindi kavita because before that it was not so much the things that we were means uh, urdu is the shairi is there so it is it, it is the property of the different uh, communities different sex or the or uh, the different people and hindi is for them sanskrit is for them but now due to the uh, use of the social media it breaks the barrier it helps to connect uh, the people from the different culture different religion crossing the boundaries but other hand is also created many few misconception uh, so in this contest it is uh, the uh, the responsibilities of the person like us who are uh, trying to uh, create the positive things in this forum so it is responsibility for us to promote the things which are positive which is the fact it cannot be uh, in the cultural exchange that we go physically and have a cultural exchange even we can uh, with the social media we can have our cultural exchange even the through the reading the books different religious book different cultures book it can break so regarding the things because a lot of the options are there but again the things is uh, lacking because we don't have any forum for that even school is missing for that so the degree colleges are missing that our workplace is also missing that we are not providing any opportunity for having an interaction from the person from the different caste different religion and different society even in our work culture we are very familiar to the person who is thinking like us who is from our religion who is from our caste who is from our community or from our area we are not more open so this is in this contest it is a uh, very much important to open ourselves and it is a need that uh, we should provide an opportunity like that to to our youths to our people that what we are carrying from one generation to other that this thing is been so at least now it should be a fact check because we are already having a different check and balance with the sdgs what we are having what we the all the country uh, rehabilitation so in my point is that uh, we understand we know the we try to know the culture but before that we are not uh, ready to fight uh, within ourselves what the knowledge or the things what we are carrying for the different cu uh, culture so for that it should be provided with a lot of the materials on the social media with the different different uh, uh, small snippet reels and the forums where we can have that uh, uh, cultural exchange things and in the our, our exchange program we have witnessed this before after sending our fellows to norway to interact with the 16 countries youths and going to the nepal when they return back they were entirely changed their thinking was changed and they are they discuss that the things to their uh, their fellows their peer group within their families and we have saw a lot of changes in them so now i'm i'm not saying that everybody should cross the boundary and go and the learn but we should have a different forum to understand the cultural exchange in the coexisting in the diverse communities
Yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, uh, thank you, Ms. Shabana, for sharing your valuable experiences and thoughts with us. Uh, now, I would like to turn to Rimsha Shai, a senior research analyst at SARIM. Please proceed with the concluding remarks. Uh, over to you, Rimsha. So, uh, yes, uh, as we conclude this webinar, I first like to extend my heartfelt gratitude uh, to uh, both our esteemed speakers for their invaluable contribution. Um, we hope this uh, uh, meeting, this webinar has shed light on the profound impact uh, cultural exchange can have in advancing uh, peaceful coexistence among diverse communities. Um, in uh, our uh, currently increasing interconnected world, uh, the necessity of recognizing and celebrating cultural diversity is uh, more critical than um, ever before. Um, uh, we have explored how uh, cultural exchange not only uh, serves as a bridge between different cultures, but also plays a pivotal role in facilitating dialogue, uh, mutual respect, and appreciation as well. Um, our discussion today has highlighted that peaceful coexistence requires more than mere acknowledgement of our uh, differences, and it demands a deeper understanding of how uh, cultural exchange shapes societies and uh, promotes uh, harmony. Uh, I will first, uh, uh, moving ahead towards uh, what our speakers have shared within the webinar, uh, I would first like to uh, really appreciate the presence of Dr. Beth Manwarkar at this early as it's uh, around 4 a.m. at his site. Uh, this really shows your determination towards furthering this good cause. And uh, uh, being the first speaker, uh, Dr. Manwarkar very well elaborated the terms uh, uh, like cultural exchange and its significance in uh, fostering inclusivity. Um, uh, cultural exchange simply means uh, sharing your own idea of uh, living with others uh, so that a sense of togetherness can be promoted. Um, he also shared that pertaining the dynamics and shared interest within South Asia, such as love for sports, um, music, and specifically food, uh, there are certain instances that brought together people of region, irrespective of their religion, ethnicity, uh, nationality, or uh, class. Um, and he uh, further said that technology is playing a significant role in uh, promoting culture at wider level and uh, connecting people from different parts of countries on a single platform as uh, we are connecting uh, here right now uh, through Zoom platform. Uh, however, Dr. Manwarkar also acknowledged uh, certain negative aspects uh, such as the ignorance of cultural taboos, um, religious contradictions, uh, prejudiced attitudes and indirect offenses caused by uh, lack of experience and distressed uh, the need to address these issues to achieve a healthy and shared cultural environment. Uh, moving ahead, um, Shiri Shabana Khan discussed the role of uh, PVCHR in fostering cultural exchange opportunities and uh, initiatives. Uh, she emphasized that this is particularly necessary for children as it allows them to understand other cultures and uh, learn to respect them as well. Uh, she highlighted uh, various programs organized by PVCHR aimed at uh, promoting peaceful coexistence and mitigating the misconception about to other cultures to like uh, sending them to other countries of the world and uh, to making them learn about other cultures uh, like books and uh, uh, shy and all. Uh, she noted that in India uh, with its wide range of communities it is crucial uh, for a peaceful society to have peaceful interaction among its diverse population and it can only be achieved through uh, cultural exchange, cultural understanding of others. Uh, I must say that uh, your organization is doing a really good job uh, thus, um, by uh, delving into the multifaceted dimension of cultural exchange. Uh, particularly in the context of South Asia, uh, we have seen its potential to mitigate uh, prejudices, uh, stereotypes and conflicts, contradictions, uh, making the way for a more inclusive and harmonious society. So, uh, yes, uh, on behalf of my team, we extend our heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed speakers for their invaluable insights and uh, to each one of you for your active participation and engagement. Uh, your contribution have enriched our discussion and has underscored uh, the importance of this topic. As uh, um, we move forward, let us carry with us the knowledge and perspectives gained today and strive to foster understanding 
and their peaceful existence in our di uh, diverse communities. Together, we can surely build a world where cultural diversity is not just recognized but celebrated and respected as well, and where peace and harmony are the uh, cornerstones of our shared human experience. Uh, thank you once again for joining us and have a wonderful day and let us continue to advance the cause of cultural exchange in our own communities and beyond. Thank you so much. Over to you, Heman. Thank you very much for your quick uh, concluding remarks, uh, remark, Rimsha. As we conclude today's webinar, I would like to express my thanks to Professor Ubed Manwatkar and Shirin Shavana Khan for sharing their expertise and experiences with us. Thank you for all for being part of this ins insightful and inspiring discussion. As we conclude, I urge you to take the learnings from today's webinar and actively foster cultural exchange and peaceful coexistence in your community. I mean, together we can make a huge difference in a society. Thank you.